Hey guys, Colin here, hope you're well. Today we're gonna to be talking about the subject of unpacking. I'm gonna show you three and a half different methods that you can use in your own environment in order to unpack malware. It's a super useful skill to know about because malware authors quite commonly will pack their malware for the purposes of antivirus detection, evasion, and also for the purposes of making sure that the likes of you and me can't easily poke around the uh, malware and find out exactly what it does under the hood. Um, so what we're gonna do is have a look at this particular sample. This is a, a, an info stealer stroke backdoor. Um, and you can see here that I've put it from Virus Total, and Virus Total has even got an indicator for it that it's uh, compressed with UPX, which is a very common packer that malware people use. Um, so we can, I've got my uh, pack malware on my desktop on my Windows 10 machine here. I like to use a piece of software called EXE Info PE that can help me identify if malware is indeed packed and give me an idea what tools may or may not be available to uh, unpack the malware. And we can see here that it, uh, it gives me the fact that it's, it is packed with UPX and I can use the uh, UPX uh, tool itself to unpack with UPX-G. So this is the cheat, right? We don't wanna do this uh, all the time and um, we wanna have some fun and, and unpack manually. So this is the kind of half method of the three and a half methods I'm gonna show you today. But we can use UPX-D dash O to feed it a file name dot unpack dot exe and feed it the original pack dot exe and UPX will actually unpack the malware for us. And here is the unpacked malware. Uh, so that's great. Let me kind of demonstrate what that means. Let me put the packed malware into Oli Debug, which is our disassembler of choice today. Um, and it's gonna ask me if I wanna analyze the code. I don't wanna do that. Uh, okay, that's cool. Um, what I'm gonna do is press control and N and have a look at the import address table. And we can see there's not many imports that, that are listed here. Very, very common for malware not to give away its import address table because um, that's part of the packing routine, right? It's gonna, it's gonna kind of hide all the code, compress it, etc., and along with the import, so you don't get to know exactly what the functionality of the malware might have been. Let me put the unpacked version into our debugger here. Um, let me press Control and N again, and we can see actually here is the full import address table because we're in unpacked space, right? We've managed to um, unpack the import address table we've managed to unpack all of the code and we can now go and poke around this malware to our heart's content and perform our additional advanced behavioral analysis. Let me delete this because that's cheating. We don't want to use uh, automated methods. We want to use manual methods. I'm going to put this malware back into Oli Debug. Uh, I don't want to analyze the code. We want to kind of uh, have a look at ourselves and see what's going on under the hood. Uh, and the first method I'm going to have a look at and I want to identify the code I'm in at the moment is called a, um, an unpacking stub. I want to find out where the, the end of the unpacking stub is and where the start of the um, unpacked malware is so where is the original entry point? That's our, that's our goal today. Now, the couple of things we're looking for, we're actually looking for what's called a tail jump. So the tail jump will have a couple of heuristics usually about it. First off, it might be um, jump into somewhere that's a long way away in memory. So not really common for compilers and CPUs to jump around in memory all over the place to kind of keep themselves neat and tidy. Um, but it might be the case that uh, the end of the unpacking stub jumps to a place in memory which is quite far away, which is where actually the unpacked memory resides. Um, so we want to look for a jump which is uh, going rather large in memory space and also what we're going to do is have a look for a jump which might be followed by a, l a lot of kind of nonsensical data. So what I'm looking at on the screen at the moment is all uh, looks like fairly valid assembly information, assembly instructions, um, but what I want to look for is a jump which might be followed by a load of nonsensical data that kind of sticks out at me. So this is kind of poking around, right? There's no real method, rhyme or reason to it, but we can see here that quite, quite quickly I come across a load of code which uh, doesn't look like valid assembly instructions and indeed it is it's all kind of zeros. We can see that's preceded by a jump instruction and the jump, if you look at the red line on the left hand side that Ollie's put in for us, is actually going to a rather large um, kind of jump if you like in memory space. It's going to a destination point in memory which is a, long, uh, a lot further away than, uh, than would normally happen. If you have a look at the jump above it for example, we can see it's only going a couple of instructions above which is uh, pretty common. So very indicative of that being a tail jump. So I'm going to press F2 to set a breakpoint. I'm going to execute my malware of F9 and we can see that straight away it's hit the breakpoint and I press F8 to take that inst next instruction to actually take the jump and here I'm hoping that I'm in unpacked territory. So what I'm going to do now, I can actually dump the malware uh, and then uh, rebuild the import address table uh, using a different tool as well. So I'm going to use Oli Dump X as a plugin to Oli Dump the process. I'm going to set the EIP as the OEP. Basically what that means is the current value of the EIP register, which is the instruction pointer, which is the memory location where we're at now. I want to set that as my original entry point. And you can see here that it's kind of calculated it between the image base and the entry point, but it's going to work out to this memory location uh, 00401000. So I can dump that 
that. Uh, everything else I can leave the same. I can dump that. It's going to it's going to append the underscore dump.exe to my file name. We'll click save and we'll click finish. Now that I want to do is go into a tool that I like to use called Scylla. Um, I'm going to attach Scylla to the original pack process to search for the import address table. It's found it in memory. If I click get imports, it's going to get all of the original imports. And then I just need to adjust what the original entry point was, which was uh, 00401000, which is the memory location that we, uh, that we jumped to. And I'm going to click on fix dump and I'm going to point it to the um, dumped process from Ollie Dump X. Press open uh, and then hopefully what we get here is another executable on our desktop which is uh, appended with the underscore SCY for Scylla.exe and I'm going to put that into Ollie Debug and hopefully we're going to be in unpacked territory and have all of the uh, stuff in our uh, import address table visible to us. So we can see the entry point is where we set it to 401000. We're going to press Control and N let me do that again, control and N, and we can see we are in fact in unpacked territory. We've got all of the uh, API calls available to us, and we can now go poking around this particular malware. So fantastic, that's great. Um, that's method number one. Let me kind of get rid of this, um, and let me get rid of that one as well, just to kind of tidy myself up a little bit. And then what we'll do is we'll go back to, let me reload um, the, uh, the malware in our debugger. Um, what we're doing, debug, restart, okay, yes, no. Okay, second method we're going to use is we're going to take advantage of the first instruction that we see on the screen at the moment. The first instruction is push AD. So push AD in assembly will push all the values of the general purpose registers to the stack. So this is part of the unpacking stub. And what we, what's going to happen here is hopefully what we're going to find is that it's going to tidy itself up. Uh, so it's going to it's going to push a load of stuff to the stack, and hopefully when it's finished doing all of its unpacking, it's going to it's going to pop off the stack. So what we can do is take that. We'll press F8. And we'll actually take that instruction, and we can see down here in the bottom right that the memory location of where the uh, where that exit that push AD instruction was has been pushed to the stack, and we can actually end, um, uh, attach it to a, hard, a hardware breakpoint on that particular location. So if that memory location does get accessed, so if something tries to pop it off the stack um, then we're going to get notified in the form of our breakpoint so that's cool fantastic let me press f9 and we can see that as soon as i press f9 you can see my hardware breakpoint has been reached um, and that's great and in fact while i'm here i'm going to disable my original breakpoint that we had before the original the reason why we've had a breakpoint on our hardware breakpoint is because this instruction here this pop ad so it's tried to pop all the values of the register right off the stack probably towards the end of its unpacking code and in fact you can see we are only just a few instructions away from where we originally found that tail jump to be so it, it didn't quite get us to the tail jump but it got us really really close and it and we can pretty much eyeball it from there it might be a case that you have to kind of um, you know go on is you know, take the instruction press F8 and take the uh, the next instruction dump the process see if you're in unpacked territory if you are great if not then keep going um, you know take the next instruction take the next instruction take the next jump etc did that get you to where you want to be so a little bit trial and error uh, we so we can see after this push AD we do have another jump uh, but this one is really really short in memory and it's followed by some valid um, uh, some, some valid instructions in assembly as well so probably not a tail jump so, you know, we would still be looking at the original tail jump that we saw as being very indicative of, uh, of where we need to be in unpacked territory. So that's method number two. So let me just uh, press Alt and H and disable that hardware breakpoint. Um, and we're going to reload the malware, Control and F2. Uh, we want to terminate and we don't want to analyze. Okay, method number three is we're going to set a breakpoint on a particular API call which might not already exist yet. So if we, again, just go and have a look in the names window, um, we can see that actually... Uh, we, we only have a few of those API calls available to us, but what we're actually going to do is we're going to kind of preempt the malware call in a particular API call, um, and that API call is get module handle A. So what we can do is press Control and G, and we can actually type in get module handle A, and we can see it resides in kernel 32. We're going to follow the label, and we're going to set a breakpoint on kernel 32 um, get module handle A. So if the malware does in fact call this in the future, then it's going to hit the breakpoint on that call within the kernel 32 module. So let me press F9 and we can see that indeed in my bottom left hand corner here, the breakpoint has been reached at kernel 32 get module handle A. Okay, that's, that's super. The next thing I need to do, let me just uh, take that breakpoint off. I'm gonna press Alt and F9 and that's gonna take the next instruction um, and keep going until it returns to, to user code. 
So what happened was um, we had this call here and you can see we're, we're back in the main module. We had this call here to get module handle A and we're actually just a few instructions away from where the original entry point was. So this, so this time, um, you know, we didn't get, we, we got quite close to where the original entry point was, but we actually overshot it just a little bit. But what we can do here is we can work our way back. So we get to get module handle A, then what we need to do is work backwards a few instructions and see whether or not we're at, you know, if we can identify where the original entry point was uh, for this particular instruction set. Now here it's pretty easy because there's no more code above this. This is, you know, we know, and, we, and in fact, because of the other, other indicators that we've seen as well, we know that the original entry point was 401,000. Um, so that's that's great. We can, uh, again, uh, you know, dump the process out at that particular memory location and hope for the best again. So, um, you know, w whatever kind of method that you see uh, being, um, you know, appropriate for you in your environment, then definitely use that to, to dump the, you know, dump the, dump the malware in its unpacked format. And that gives you the ability then to, to go and poke around the malware and see exactly what, you, see exactly what the, uh, the features of the malware that you're interested in under the hood. So let me kind of do that again for you. Let me um, just get rid of the, uh, let me, let me fact get, go back in and give you the um, uh, sample again of uh, identifying the tail jump. So let me eyeball this one a little bit for you. So we're scrolling through code, we're looking for stuff which kind of um, you know sticks out at us that doesn't look right, what have you, and we can find the tail jump pretty easily because it's followed by all of this, all of the zero data. We can F2 it, we can press F9 to get to that particular point, press F8 to take the instruction, and we can dump the process from there using Oli Dump X. Uh, we can do that by pressing, uh, get the EIP as the OEP, let's dump it to, uh, to, to packed underscore dump, we'll finish. Uh, let's go back into Scylla because we need to uh, rebuild the import address table. We'll attach it to Pact. Let's um, find the IAT. Let's get all of the imports which it's found. Let's double check that we set our OEP uh, as the original entry point uh, value that we've set already. Let's press fix dump and we'll uh, give it to Pact underscore dump and that will give us the new executable underscore uh, SCY.exe. Let's put that back into Oli Debug. Um, that's fine. Do I want to use old data? No, I don't. Um, and that's great. So we're now in a case where we can then go around and have a look in this um, API in, in the um, import address table and have a look for any API calls which might be of interest to us. One of the things that I like to look for just out of interest is, is malware which can uh, write itself. Um, oops, let me go back into my window here. So kernel32.write file um, is a really interesting API call to follow because um, you know that's where it's obviously looking to write to the disk. We can find references, references, references to that uh, particular API call using control on R. And we can see here that it's called a few times as well. So we can actually set breakpoints all over here. So ignore the kernel based ones, but we can just set breakpoints on all of those particular references to, uh, to kernel 32 write file. We can press F9 to run the malware and it's gonna break every single time it's gonna write to disk. So here we can see there hasn't yet called write file, but we can have a look and see. So we had three parameters that were pushed to this particular function. We had the size, which was 88, the buffer, uh, and also we got the, uh, the handle as well. So 0198 in hex as well. So in fact, what we can actually do, let me uh, fire up process hacker here and we've got the dumped SUI process. Let me go into it and you can have a look in handles uh, and we can see here that uh, zero, the handle to 0198 is this um, local in, in the temp directory, this ab96.temp abc6.bat. Um, so we can go to that, let me see, let me go to the, that file location, we go to temp, we can see that folder, we can see the, the bat file, but we edit it, we can see that it's blank. And that's because we've not written to it yet, right? Um, so what we need to do is actually take the next instruction, which will write to the disk. Let's go back to this file. Let's press F5. We can see it's now one kilobyte. Let's edit it. And we can see actually that it's now written to the disk. And what it's written to the disk is actually the contents of what would uh, what would be in one of the other registers. Uh, and we can follow that in the dump as well. So let's press F9 again. Let's see, uh, we get straight back to the, uh, the same breakpoint that we hit before. The handle is now number 14. We can have a look in process hacker. What was number 14? Um, let me see, uh, 14 is this one which was the desktop. Okay, so it's gonna to write to a file that's on the desktop. Uh, and then we you know, we, we wanna look for, you know, exactly what it's writing. Uh, and in this particular instance, we, you know, if we take the instruction, we can hopefully see what's what's now occurred on our desktop. We could probably follow along with uh, in Procmon to see what's going on as well under the hood. Uh, but if we have a look, oops, let's have a look on our desktop. Um, 
and we can see here we've got this uh, new executable called mhserver.exe and again another binary which you can then go and kind of poke around in so we're walking through the malware kind of step by step we can it's in a controlled environment it, it's doing stuff that we want it to do uh, and we, we're now in unpacked territories and we don't have to deal with code uh, kind of on the fly we're now dealing with stuff instruction by instruction and we can kind of play around with it to our heart's content so there's three methods hopefully that's of use to you and uh, best of luck to